Hi, my name is Casey. I uh, want to talk to you today about uh, my experience with long COVID. I originally caught COVID back in January of 22, I guess, uh, and it was really mild. Uh, didn't really have any problems with it. I took a couple of hours off of work to go and have a rest. Um, and then it was uh, two weeks later that um, it was like Valentine's Day, actually, I remember it really clearly. I started, uh, I went upstairs to go and get something and I had a really hard time making it up the stairs and I ran out of breath. And, uh, you know, that was the, the start of my long COVID journey. It just got kind of worse from there. Uh, symptoms were all over the place for probably four or five months. Uh, I would get palpitations. I would have a really hard time um controlling anger and and emotions which i found weird um you know i would um there would be something minor that would happen with my wife or or my kids and my response would be to yell and so much that it shocked me when i was doing it and i found that really odd um i had a hard time i went from you know skiing cycling um uh running being relatively fit uh, to having a really hard time even just walking the half kilometer to my kid's school to pick her up and get back. Um, uh, brain fog was horrific. Um, I would disassociate. I uh, had a really hard time processing information, especially if it was loud or windy uh, or if I was tired. My sleep was horrible. Um, had, I think I said before, palpitations and digestive issues and uh, generally felt horrible. Um, over the next almost two years, I would, uh, I kind of had waves where I might get slightly better. And then um, it was always too good to be true, it seemed, and it didn't last. And I would go and I would exercise and I would do not even too much exercise, uh, you know, maybe walk a kilometer and a half and I would spend a week in bed. Uh, it wouldn't hit me. So I had the the PEM, it wouldn't hit me for uh, maybe two days. And then all of a sudden I would just go off a cliff and had a really hard time. I uh, went through all the studies with private medical in the UK that I could and, um, you know, had respiratory and uh, psychological and um, looking at all kinds of nervous issues and uh, everything with my heart and nobody could find anything uh, that was actually wrong. Uh, the long COVID clinic is, you know, as good as they were, they tried to put me into a working group to help me manage symptoms. Um, but I felt that it was just nobody understood how bad I actually was. Uh, so I didn't really work um, for about eight months. I tried to do a phased return. I'm a software engineer. I tried to do a phased return back to work and I lasted about three weeks and uh, I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't keep up with the thinking. Um, I would get confused really easy and it was really frustrating. Um, that was in the November. I tried to do a phased return. Then in January, I really got quite bad with everything. I uh, got incredibly depressed. Um, the lowest I've ever been in my life. And it was really, really hard. Like I knew that what was happening wasn't good. Uh, and I understood that kind of depression. I've had depression before, but this was felt different. Like it felt like not just that I was falling down. It felt like I was being pulled down um, and it was horrible. Uh, the best thing, and this is my number one piece of advice that I am going to give you is, is to learn to accept it. And I went to integration therapy and I did a lot of work, um, for several months, uh, trying to get over the trauma of the whole thing. And, you know, you don't realize how much the trauma is actually trauma actually gets into you, but it does, it's pretty easy apparently to create PTSD and uh, the loss of life and the loss of activity and the loss of the future that I thought that I would have and that I couldn't see anymore um, was all really tough. 
And integration therapy really, really, I mean, amazingly helped me understand purpose and helped me reshape what I thought I wanted out of life or what I did want out of life um, and helped me find new purpose. Um, so that was that was really good. Uh, once I kind of had that under control, I decided I was going to try another phase to return. Um, I was getting better at managing my symptoms, and I started working with a company in London that's called Working to Wellbeing, uh, and they became accidental long COVID specialists, uh, and they gave me finally somebody that could define for me what pacing actually meant. So pacing, as their description is, think about what you can reasonably do in a session, whether it's work or walking or whatever the activity is, and do half of it. Yeah. And limit yourself, time yourself, and stop yourself uh, from doing more than that. And you get used to doing it at that level. And then you increase it by one or two percent. Uh, and you hold at that level for three, four days a week. Uh, and you try to get as much routine into your days as you can, and you pace by these tiny, tiny increments. And when I was pacing before, I think my steps up to the next level were too big and too quick, even though they were still really, really small compared to what I used to be able to do. Uh, but that level of pacing really helped me, and I was really surprised with how effective it was with software engineering. I started doing some programming on my own time, uh, and when I would cut myself off, it helped to manage my brain fog. It helped to manage my my fatigue. Uh, I limited the amount that I did it in a day. So, you know, I started off doing like 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, and I would only do four sessions, uh, which was really boring because it would take me two hours to do an hour worth of programming. And I found it incredibly frustrating. Uh, but as I did that more and more, it didn't actually take all that long before I was up to 20 minutes and 30 minutes. And then I was started shrinking the rest time and slowly increasing that that active time. Uh, and I could really see the benefits that downtime gave my mind and my body a chance to recover uh, and do something different. Uh, the thought, pro thought process when I went back to it was significantly clearer than it would have been with outpacing. So I started back uh, at my work, uh, taking this pacing mentality, being completely open to it, being okay with whatever happened with it as well because of the integration therapy that I had done. And then this study came out from, I think it was the University of Pennsylvania in the middle of October that found there was a link to low serotonin and long COVID. They think that it affects maybe 45% of people this way, but they found that the link was that your blood levels had very, very low serotonin. They traced it back and found out that the immune system was still kind of low level background active, trying to fight a virus that they think might be in the stomach wall uh, where the immune system can't get to it, but the virus can't get out. It's not doing any damage to you. It's actually the immune system that is blocking the uptake of the chemicals that you need to make serotonin. Uh, when you start looking into the effects of low serotonin, it's all of the long COVID symptoms that I had. It's that inability to control your emotions, to be, to be depressed, to, um, to be, to be angry because it, because it cuts off that thinking part of your brain from the primal part of your brain so that you can't really control it. And it's the fight or flight. Uh, it controls your heart rate, your breathing, your sleeping serotonin breaks down into melatonin, which helps you helps you sleep at night it regulates your sleep it uh it's a serotonin is a neurotransmitter so it helps how you think how your body communicates and what i started doing about two weeks later is i took a test to measure my blood levels in my urine uh, like they had done in the study found out that they were very low uh not they were still on the good scale but they were right on the bottom line of it uh, I started talking to a GP friend of mine here in the UK, uh, looking at the recommendations of the study and uh, kind of outside of the NHS, we had some other conversations with a, with another doctor and thought, well, I'm going to try some food supplements to see if they can help. And what I was taking was a food supplement for 5-HTC, which is what you need to 
uh, build your serotonin, um, L-tyrosine, which uh, builds dopamine, serotonin and dopamine work together. So if you boost one, you want to boost the other for um, good balance in your system. And then choline, which is uh, kind of improves your um, cognitive function in general. And I started taking this dosage, uh, which was quite small. And uh, I found that within um, within two days, I started to notice the effects and I was feeling better and I had more energy. Uh, within a week, I had energy bursting out. I couldn't wait to go out for a walk. I walked further than I have walked in almost two years uh, in, in that first couple of weeks. And I got pretty quickly up to doing like four or five K no problems, no negative effects. Yes. My muscles hurt, but I hadn't used them in two years. Uh, so that was amazing. Cognitively. I've not had any brain fog. Uh, I started this in November. I've not had any brain fog in almost three months. Uh, I've not had much fatigue. I did push myself a bit too hard with work. Uh, I'm still on my phase return. I'm still ramping up. I did too much. It was too intense. Uh, I paid for it last week a little bit, but I was all recovered again by Sunday. So certainly not what I was experiencing with long COVID before. Uh, you know, you can go and find links to the study. I've got posts on Facebook on the uh, long COVID recovery stories. If you go and look on there where I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, uh, you can engage, search for me. You should be able to find it on there. Um, it is absolutely uh, amazing the effect that this has had on me. I did retest my serotonin levels over Christmas as well, found out that they were actually a little bit too high. High serotonin can be dangerous. Um, certainly if you're on any other kind of medication, you want to speak to your doctor before you start taking this. There's such thing as serotonin syndrome, which can have really, really bad effects, including killing you uh, because it kind of overcharges your system. Um, but as for me, as long as I was monitoring it, um, then that's been okay. I basically cut my dose in half. Um, I'm running on this half dose now. It's working really, really well for me. Uh, once every couple of weeks, I slip an extra dose in, um, and I can kind of feel where the right balance is, uh, where I'm kind of operating effectively and where I'm not. Anyway, I hope that this, uh, this helps you. There is hope out there. You know, you. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that anybody has, if you can find a way to get in touch. Um, and yeah, um, keep hope. It's okay. You'll get there. Um, I did. I didn't believe for a long time and I'm still skeptical a little bit now, but uh, I am absolutely loving my life again and so happy to be able to be back and be myself.